Hi, and welcome to How to Use Pear Deck to Increase Student Engagement During Zoom Lessons. I'm Caroline Hawbaker. I teach sixth and seventh grade science at E. Russell Hicks Middle School. I included my email on the slide if you had any questions at any time. What I would like you to do is please go to joinpd.com on the internet of your choice. In the cloud, there is a code. Please enter in that code. This way you will be able to see the presentation as if you were a, a student. So this first slide is just an introduction. Go ahead, tell me, what do you wonder about Pear Deck? So let's talk about what Pear Deck is. With Pear Deck, I can engage every single student in every class every time we meet for a Zoom lesson. I can instantly see who's confused and who's ready to move on. Um, that's the power of Pear Deck. And now with that Pear Deck add-on that we use in Google Slides, um, you can see that magic happen yourself throughout formative assessments and interactive questions that you can add to presentations that you might already have created. So let's talk about how to install Pear Deck. It's very easy. What you're gonna do is you're going to open and create a new Google slide. Then on the add-on menu, you'll go and get add-ons, search for Pear Deck and install. And that's it. You're now ready to create and present interactive presentations with Google Slides. The students don't need to download anything. They just need to go to joinpd.com just like you did. So once it's installed, let's take a look at what it would look like. A sidebar will open up on the slide, just like if you were going to add a template or an animation or even an image to a Google slide. You can see that it pops up on the right and it has a template library and you can see that it says, ask students a question. This is where all the interactive magic happens. So let's talk about it. <clears throat> There are six different types of formative assessments that you can give throughout your lesson. You have text, choice, number, and website. Those all come with the free version. However, if you're lucky enough like me that you have a principal who's willing to pay for it, fingers crossed, or um, you're working under the free version right now because of the pandemic, you'll have two other options there. You'll have draw, and draggable. So go ahead, this is a choice slide. I want you to click which one you feel like you would feel most comfortable using in your class. Let's talk about each one of these different types of slides individually and what they can do for you, even if you're miles and miles away from your students. So <clears throat> this is an example of a text slide. And text slides can be used for so many different things, even just a brain dump. So I made a slide for my students that said, uh, electromagnets are similar to other magnets and they're expected to come up with some answers. So let's talk about teacher view and student view. For that type of slide, the student view is on the right, just like you saw before. The students will have the question on the left, and they'll be able to type in their response. And then what I see from the dashboard is that I see their answers as they come in. So as they're typing, I see three little dots and the words just magically appear. I don't have to wait for them to hit submit. I can tell right away if they're going down the wrong track. And I also can tell right away if they're ready to move on and how many of them are getting it right and how many of them are getting it wrong. Another thing that you can do with this is that you can make the slides a little bit more interactive. For example, on this slide, I embedded a video through Google Slides and I put the text box there. So as you watch the video on the left, you can go ahead and you can take notes on the right as if you were a student. So in student view, if I show you on my iPad, I would be go ahead, 
to open it up. It'll open it up in YouTube. And then I can go ahead and I can watch the presentation and I can take notes. And this will be good too, because you know, all the students have different connectivity issues. And if somebody falls behind, it's just a nice way for them to be able to catch up with you. Choice. I love the choice aspect. It just gives a quick understanding and I can really see who's paying attention and who's not. My biggest fear when we started remote learning was how am I ever going to get anybody to participate? And after the first class, I was like, all I'm doing is looking at ceiling fans or it's so obvious that they're playing a video game because I could see blue and orange flashes on their face or they're looking down because they're texting on the phone. Nobody's talking. Nobody will put anything in the chat. Nobody will unmute themselves. And so when it comes to something like this, where now they can be more accountable in a safe space, I'm the one who can see their answers. I can share out their answers in presentation view, but <clears throat> right away I can see, hmm, I have two people who are picking the wrong claim right now, but I can also do it to spark a debate then between answers. In this case, claim two and claim three were both valid. And I could show that to my students and we can even have a seminar. And we could do that online with the Zoom, even going into breakout rooms. All of this can be done at the same time. When you go to make a choice question, a pop-up box will show up and you'll just type in the responses. Now there's no way to like check a right or a wrong answer for this. This is something that you're just gonna visually uh, see, but we'll talk about how to grade these afterwards, if that's something that you're interested using another Google add-on. The next type of uh, slide that I'd like to talk about is number. Now, these might be for my math people a little bit more, but it could just be anything, estimating values, how far away you think something is. Um, <clears throat> so, what I would like you to do, since this is an interactive slide, how many times have you filled up your gas tank since March 14th? Always interested in that question, because for me, the answer is two. But I also went to New Jersey. <laughs> and I taught from there, hundreds of, miles of, hundreds of miles away. The next slide that I would like to talk about is the website slides. Now, I'd like you to use a little bit of caution with these, because you should always test the website first to see if it will work on their devices before you count on it in class, because you know how many times have you gone to do something and then the website does not work. All right, so for the website, on the side just like before, this time when you're presenting instructions, you can point students to a website for reading. You can link them directly to New ELA. You can have them watch a video on the side or maybe work in a simulation or even like we can see now, a Google form. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and fill out that Google form for me. Just a couple of quick little questions so you can see how this would work in your class. And go ahead and submit. Hardest part is the silence. I always wanna have music playing in the background. And of course, you could just pause me at any time. It's that easy, you have a Google form, a Google doc, um, you can have a spreadsheet, you can have a simulation there. In fact, let's look at the simulation now because I love using it with a simulation from that. So you'll notice now on your screen, the directions of what to do are on the left, but the website is on the right. And I have a couple of think about questions as well. So I would give students a couple of minutes to go ahead and explore and then follow those directions. And maybe I would put them in breakout rooms to have smaller group discussions about the three think abouts with the, where the potential energy, kinetic energy, and the amount of total energy is in the system. Now, the problem with some simulations, and I will speak directly to the middle school science teachers out there, when you put in Amplify as a website, you get that, you're logged in and you have to go back to application and it will not work side by side like this, but it will work if you just put it in as a separate link. All right, so just something the students could tap on the page 
And then that way it will take them in a new tab to all the Amplify simulations. The next type of slide is draggable. Now, draggable is a premium feature. So if you're working on the free version, you will not have it. But I love the draggable. Now, <clears throat> in this case, I applied it directly to what we had just done on the previous slide. And I had my students drag the dot where they thought the most potential energy was, and then drag the square where they thought the most kinetic energy was. And you can do that too now. You can drag your dot and your square where you think that they will belong. This can also be used to, you know, take side on a debate or indicate how they're feeling about if they're ready to move on during the lesson or not. Or even if it's a multiple choice question and you don't want to have the choices on the side, if it's something that you don't want to retype because you just took a screenshot from, I don't know, a previous resource, they can just drag the dot to what they think is the correct answer. Is. So let's take a look at that, what happens when the students answer it. On my dashboard, this is what I saw in my class. Now you'll notice that some students have the squares in the wrong spot, but it does give you an idea that most kids are ready to move on. But I can click on a specific object. So I picked on this one square that was in the wrong spot. Those should only be dots at the top of the ramps. And I can see who that kid was who put the square in the wrong spot. And that way I know that I can follow up with him either privately during office hour Zooms or I can even just send feedback to him and right there just type, hmm, I think maybe you thought it could be this, but let's talk about it a little bit more and let's look for deeper understanding. So when you get your draggable slides, uh, you can have the maximum of five different objects to drag and it changes. You could do a dot or uh, a fish or a dog or plus signs, minus signs, math teachers. If, <clears throat> if you're doing like, four blank one equals five, the kids could drag in either plus or minus since you can have five at a time. And that way it would be fun uh, to fill that in and watch their engagement that way. You can also change the size of what you drag. Um, really big dot, really small dot, big fish, little, little fish. And those are all individual as well. The next slide that I want to talk about, I think is my absolute favorite, and it's also a premium feature, and this is the one reason why I will beg, beg, beg anybody if they can buy this one for me. Um, <clears throat> so in draw, the students can draw all over the entire slide. Now, you can't put any additional links in there because they won't be able to click on the link. Uh, I learned that the one the hard way, um, like we do. Um, but you can have them do mind mapping, show calculations, uh, even something fun like a brain break to get them in, uh, just more engaged. So for example, sometimes I set my lessons to student paste. When I do that, I change the backgrounds to the ones I want them to use to green. That way they can kind of go back and forth and they know what slides in the presentation that they should be working on. And at the end of it, after they've worked so hard, I generally have then a red slide that tells them to stop and go no further. And I like to have fun on those red slides. So for example, you can do something like this. A duck is late to the party and forgot to dress up. Draw a fancy outfit on the duck. And the students can go ahead and draw right on the duck. And they're still with you. They can still hear you on the Zoom, but it just gives them a little bit more creativity and maybe makes them forget a little bit about what's going on in the world. Another thing that you can do, also again, middle school science teachers, um, lots of times we ask students to annotate text or images. The draw slides will allow you to do that. So if this was one of the evidence cards from this unit that we just completed in sixth grade science, well, the students can go ahead and write on there right away what they think is important about this slide. But the major thing that I use it for, I use it to fill in data tables. Um, so this was an assignment that I sent my students to the simulation that opened up in a new tab. And I had them in Zoom breakout rooms, so they were working in small groups um, because, you know, sometimes technology doesn't work for everybody. And all they do is they just typed in the potential energy before and after uh, the launch and the kinetic energy after the launch. And that way we were able to 
share our data with each other because then I'm able to share that out to the entire class. So there are lots of different ways that you can use those six different options for questions. But the really nice thing about Pear Deck is they have a ton of really great stuff for you already made. So also on the sidebar, there's a part that says template library. And in there, you have lesson ideas for the beginning of the lesson, the end of the lesson, during the lesson, critical thinking, socio-emotional learning, and then also they have different questions by topic. So there are some questions just for science. There are some questions even for like little kids too. Um, this is all ways that you can look at these things and see how they can connect to your class and they're all editable. You can change everything on them. It just gives you a nice jumping off point. So <clears throat> at the beginning of lessons, uh, you know, student-centered instructions begins with the learner, asking them to begin with what we expect the students to learn from that topic and see if you can draw on prior knowledge. These slides will help you do that. All right, so these are just some of the examples of slides that are available at the beginning of a lesson. Now, during a lesson, if you want some things to set up, you can have summarize what you learn, draggable slides, should I move on? Is this true or false? How are you feeling about this right now? Do you feel comfortable that you would be able to share what you've just learned? And that way you can ask specific kids who say yes to that, that you can ask them to unmute themselves because then if they feel comfortable to talk that way, you know right away and you don't have to go. So would anybody like to answer that question? And then you hear crickets as you're watching their ceiling fans. The end of the lesson, little exit tickets to always make sure it's a good idea to see how they feel about what they learned throughout that day. So you know what needs to be hit a little bit harder next time. And those are already made. Now, what I really like to do is I actually like to take one of the during instructions, they have one that is a temperature check and it allows students to drag their dot to where they're feeling. And like I said, everything is editable. So it should look like, I think I can pull it up. It should look like this, but I change it to this at the end of my slide. Just adding a little bit of humor just going through it. And then it really does also give me a good idea of, is anybody gonna come to my office hours today? I don't know that they always say that they are, but let's see if they actually have any intention of coming. And so far, every kid who's dragged their dot to that red section of, yes, I am going to come, has shown up. So this has been something that has been really good for me to use, and it's made me use my time a little bit more efficiently. Um, be efficiently because if nobody drags their dot there, I might not, you know, just sit there still for the entire hour, just waiting, waiting, waiting. I'll probably get some other things done while Zoom is just closed in the background, just on, just waiting to see if anybody shows up. But you know, they never do. So what it would look like then? So this is actually one of my classes, and so nobody put uh, that they were coming to office hours that day. Some kid did show up, uh, but. Uh, it just was a nice way for me to see how they were feeling. And again, I could click on every single one of these dots to see who are my kids that are feeling a little bit worried about this stuff. Other types of slides that they have included is critical thinking slides, and you can edit this. In fact, uh, the one that says considering different viewpoints, uh, I changed that completely uh, to show like what my students would think about it and what a fifth grade student who hadn't learned anything would think about it. So they could talk about what they already knew and what they had learned through everything and then what gaps were probably missing from elementary school. Uh, the step up to the solution, I really like that one as well because it allows them to plan and build their critical thinking skills for something a little bit more specific. So one of my favorite ones is the interpret one. And ELA teachers, this is probably gonna be a great one for you. Uh, so <clears throat> I had the pleasure of teaching AVID in seventh grade for seven years at E. Russell Hicks. And one of our assignments is that we would read this poem. And I loved this poem. Uh, 
so you can see how you can set this up. It could be an image, it could be a piece of the text like this, um, but it, you know, what do you think the author is trying to convey from those lines of the poem? And the students would then answer it over to the side. So one of the other things that they already have, and it, this is especially good at this time when you haven't seen your students for so long, and if we don't start with them on the, with them in the fall, uh, the socio-emotional learning. And I really like the what's filling your bucket and what's draining it that, you know, the kids always say, oh, you know, Netflix is filling it and schoolwork is draining it. There's stress checks, but you can even make your own. You'll notice in the lower right-hand corner, I put one of my three-year-old there uh, and it was just kind of like text, how are you doing? Do you have anything good that you need to share? and what's currently stressing you out. And then when they finished early, they got to draw amazing mustaches on my child. And they were very fun for both of us. So for me to share out the mustaches and then for them to do it. So let's try that. What's filling your bucket today? And what's draining it? Go ahead, just take a couple of seconds. You can pause me if you need to. And reflect on what's giving you energy today and what's draining you out. How about a stress check? So this is a little self-assessment that you can do just to kind of check in with how your students are feeling. Uh, and I want you to start imagining how you would do this next year if we're still doing remote learning, or even if this is something that can work in your classroom every day. So there's one more area of templates that we probably should discuss, and that's templates by subject area. Uh, there are so many of them, and it would probably take another three hours for me to go through all of them. Uh, but I just wanted to, for you to see what's available and to give you a couple of uh, examples. So this next slide, and I did turn this one on for you so you can kind of play with it as well. Uh, this was one that was already made. I did nothing to this. Sixth grade science teachers, this is definitely one that I'm gonna include in the future. Uh, just something really quick that you can see right away just by asking them this one question, are they understanding what you guys have been talking about? How about social studies? So I hear the social studies teachers on my team talk about sources all of the time and all of their DBQs. Well, this is one that was already made. So this could be something that would go almost into planning if you're doing a long scale project. So it'll help them, you know, kind of get better at identifying different types of sources and becoming familiar with those different types. So when they are doing their own research, they feel a little bit more comfortable. ELA teachers, story map. How great is this one? You read a little story in their individual work and the kids just go ahead and map it out with you. And you can go ahead and go, oh, wait, Johnny, are, is that what the problem was? Go ahead and put a little bit more detail there because you can see it in real time. And our little friends. This is one that's already made. And again, you can take out every single one of these images and add it with your own. Um, I know for a fact that my son would love to see a school bus on there for B. Uh, so I, maybe I could take away the bat and add a bus, all right? So I wanna give you a little bit of time, maybe pause me for a second so you can fill this in, um, or even just think about it and then just move on. Um, what have you seen that you think that you can use during your Zoom lessons? And you can just jot down a couple of ideas. And I'm gonna continue on because it's weird. <laughs> so let's talk about, okay, everything is made. How do I actually go ahead and start a lesson and engage my students? In the sidebar, all you have to do is tap start lesson. You'll get an option if you would like it student paced or instructor paced. Uh, I turned on this one so it would be student paced so you can obviously work on it at your own time. Um, and once you do that, a code will pop up. Uh, in this case, you'll see that it says, uh, you know, Warm Jacks inspect stoic ninjas. They always have something cute like that. But 
please notice that you have some options below. In fact, I rarely ask my students to type in the code anymore. After the third week when I figured out that Pear Deck has magical powers, I don't have them go to join PD anymore. When I invite them to the Zoom lesson in Google Classroom, I also give them that link. When you tap it, it copies a link to your uh, clipboard. And when you go and paste that link into Google Classrooms, when the students click it and then sign in with their single sign-on Google WCPS account, it will take them directly to this presentation and all they have to do is click. They don't have to type anything. Or I can even invite the entire class through Google Classroom. I still give them the link because they still have to get to it somehow. Either give them the link to join PD and ask them to type in the code or just give them that one link that says give the students the link and then that way <clears throat> they type it. But the difference is what I see is that all of my students who are enrolled in my Google Classroom then show up on my dashboard as well. And we'll talk about that in one second. So who sees what where? <laughs> that was the hardest thing. And even right now, I have three devices uh, in front of me just in case. Uh, but now, generally, I just use two devices as I'm teaching. I use my MacBook to show the presenter view. And it just it shows the slides. And it also can display student responses without anybody knowing who each other are. It does not put the students' names up on the Zoom link. The student view, they can see only their response. And if you have the premium, and I do recommend it, you get the dashboard. And this way you actually see each of them individually. Um, and that's really the way that you're going to get the student engagement. So I, I can't highly recommend the premium version enough. Uh, to zoom in on that dashboard to show what you see, and this, these are not my students. I didn't want to, uh, anything there. I just got this from the Pear Deck website. Um, so you can see that there are a bunch of different controls uh, that really allow you to check in on your students. <clears throat> I know that Pear Deck, and, and we've been pushing it so much at our school, um, that even our department supervisor is thinking about getting it for the entire county. So this is something that, um, and uh, when it's utilized correctly, it just, man, it takes all of the stress out of distance learning teaching because it keeps students accountable. And you know if a student has walked away because that's happened. How many times has that happened where you're looking at a kid's name and you're kind of going, I don't think he's there. Uh, he's not doing anything. Pear Deck will allow you to see that without you know looking through their window. Um, so like I said this one before, I can see immediately who is completely lost in this lesson. Um, so if the students at this point should be either picking claim two or claim 3D, and I know you can't see that right now, but I have two students who clicked claim 3A. Well, and I blacked out their names for their privacy, but I can see who they are and I know exactly if I'm going to like ask a specific student that question, I'm going to call on them because then I'm going to make sure that they understand why it cannot be claimed 3A. What also I can see then if I have the dashboard, if I scroll down, I can see who has not responded. Now, if you invite your entire class, everybody's name will be down there, including the kids who did not log into the Zoom lesson. So I generally just and give the kids that link and I don't invite them through Google Classroom anymore. Uh, that way I don't have 10 names to look through if only half of my class showed up, uh, which you know happens sometimes. But right here I can see that three students haven't responded. So I can start, you know, calling them out and just be like, hey, hey sweetie, are you there? Are you there? Hello? And that way, sometimes I'll get in the chat and it'll say, oh, my Pear Deck just froze for a second. Um, but most of the time, I can tell that those kids are the ones who logged into Zoom, maybe logged into the Pear Deck, but they're not in the same room as their device. They're off making a sandwich um, and not bringing enough for the whole class, which is always a disappointment. How about sharing answers to each other, especially with those students are, who are lost? Um, at the bottom of the screen while you're presenting, there's something that sh says share, sh uh, show responses. Um, and you can actually star good answers so you don't have to show the entire classes at once. 
And for the students to be able to see this, I just tell them tap the red microphone in the corner of your screen to go back to the Zoom screen sharing link. When I do that, they can see, you know, the three, claim 3A right there, claim 3B, those answers. So even if they don't have enough time to go back and to change their answer, especially if this is instructor, pa instructor pace, they still get to see what their other classmates are thinking about. And I know when I'm working on anything like that, I always kind of be like, well, what do you have? Am I even going on the right direction or not? Um, and I always kind of tell them that, all right, go ahead and click the red microphone if you're stuck and if you're not really quite sure what's right and let's discuss other people's answers. And when I go back and I look at my dashboard, I can see a bunch of kids going, oh, delete, 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 delete. And that, that's okay. It's giving them opportunity um, to kind of, you know, give them self-feedback as well and compare their answers with others. Um, and I don't put anybody on the spot because their names are never included on this unless I say, you know, good job, Johnny. So <clears throat> if all of a sudden you're in the middle of a conversation and you go, oh man, I really wish I could ask them a specific question about this right now, you can go ahead and add a slide. Now you can't edit them at all. Unfortunately, that's kind of locked out because you're presenting. So you can't edit the Google slide, but you can add a Pear Deck slide in the middle. And there are two full screens of them, of ones that you can just add in. Um, and so that's a really great thing if you can go, oh man, I had this conversation, but I just saw something in the chat that makes me a little bit concer concerned. Let me go ahead and ask a question to the entire class. Uh, so we do need to talk about this. What can possibly go wrong? Because things will always go wrong. And I feel like at least once every class, even though I ask them every class before they log in to please do a hard reset, I have to tell somebody, please do a hard reset. And the kids are so used to it right now. I just get a little message in the chat and it says, hard reset, be right back. Um, but the things that I found that can work is if the kids close all the tabs and reopen the Pear Deck again. Um, a hard reset of the device, even switching to another browser. If they're using Safari, go ahead and switch over to Chrome. Um, and my very, very last resort, and it has happened, and I'm glad that I have this option, uh, but it's something that I don't like because I can't see the feedback later, um, is uh, to send me private message to the instructor in the chat. That way, like to answer the question. So if it's a multiple choice question, I'll have kids just privately putting in the chat 3B. I don't like that as much because they don't get takeaways of their learnings either. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and kind of show you the after. So, okay, if, if this is it, if this is done, what do I see? What do the students see? Um, so if you go to, uh, no, PearDeck.com, since I randomly clinked on the Google Voice thing, my apologies. Uh, when you click on it, internet in Mercersburg is slow today. It'll give you an option for teacher login. And then you just sign in with your Google sign in as always. Um, and there are so many amazing uh, help sessions on here, just they have uh, their own slides that they've already created. Uh, but let me first start showing you with the sessions. Uh, now you can see here um, that I have quite a bit and some are opened and some are closed. Most of these are test ones. Um, but what happened, so let me go to here. This was my period one, uh, week nine. So this is just last week. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to, let's see. If I open up the session. All right, so this was something that I actually presented uh, this week um, and this is their uh, dashboard. <laughs> so, uh, this was one of my students' answers for that one. But from here, what I can do is when I hit end, um, and I can hit end session and publish takeaways, I can actually share what they've learned to Google Classroom and it creates its own doc for them. 
And that way they can open it up. I won't do that again because it's a little bit late right now and I don't want all their iPads uh, chiming right now. Uh, but that's one way for you to be able to uh, have a record of their work because so many times when I've gone through and I've gone and I wanted to give them points for participation, I've gone, well, wait a second. I know that you didn't work that much because I had to keep on calling out your name and that's when you finally typed in answers. Um, but sometimes I'm like, oh, I took attendance, but maybe this kid came in late and I just forgot to put a check mark. And I've been actually able to open up their uh, takeaways and go, oh yeah, wait, no, there it is. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is if you wanted to grade these, which, uh, I don't really recommend. I just, um, the grading for them, it just, it seems a little bit more cumbersome than it needs to be. Um, especially if these are formative assessment, I think that they just kind of give you a better idea of where the kids are. Um, but there is a way if you have these all set as multiple choice questions, then maybe, I'm not sure if I would do the drawing or the text responses. I feel like that would take too long. Um, but what I'm doing is that I'm just opening it up. Uh, I didn't even check to see which one I opened. <laughs> So hopefully there's something in here that's appropriate. Um, so it's creating a, a Google slide, not a Google slide, sorry, a Google Sheets for it. And oh, I need it to load faster so I can hide all the names. Bam, all right, just pretend you never saw them. Uh, I think I know how to edit videos. Maybe I can block those out. So uh, what I can do is I can do another add-on um, and that add-on is called Fluberoo. And with Fluberoo, you can, there it is. Um, with Fluberoo, you can go through and grade it. I'm sure there are great videos and maybe somebody else is doing one for this time about how to do that. Um, I, I'm not sure if I would really recommend it. I know one week I was like, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna give them points for it. But even using Fluberoo, which makes this much easier, it, it still takes a lot of time. Um, so a little bit, I'm not sure if I would really recommend it. Uh, you'll notice that a bunch of these also say unnamed. You can go ahead and you can name your sessions. Um, so for example, this one, and I'm not even sure, I think that this was a practice session, so I can write practice and it renames it there. So that way I can be like, okay, this was week eight, period six. If a question comes up, also I can direct a student to that as well because I do post their takeaways to Google Classroom. Um, that way they can kind of see the work if they're writing an argument or even our end of unit assessments was this week. Um, so they can, you know, look back at some of their answers throughout class to kind of get some help. Not that they ever look back. Now, Pear Deck is amazing with their online teaching. Um, their videos for how to get started, the cool things that you can do frequently asked questions, um, everything is on here. The last thing that I uh, want to share, and uh, hopefully this will be the last thing, um, is that one of the things that they offer is a Pear Deck vocabulary. Um, and it's studying with factory sets. Now, I have not done this with my classes yet. And if we had more than, you know, two, two more days, I would definitely do this uh, because it is so easy. All you have to do is just hit the create vocab list. If you already have, because um, I already have Quizlet and I download lists from them all the time. I don't think I've typed in a list there forever because other teachers are just so amazing. Um, all I would have to do is let's say I want it to be, okay, this Amplify Matter, Energy, and Ecosystems. I would go ahead and open it up. Then I would hit export. And hopefully this works. It worked the other day when I tested it. Let me try this again. Export, copy text. Fingers crossed. Oh, import. There we go. Did it work? I think it worked. Cool. I always like it when things work. Uh, and that's it. And then, so what did that take me? Less than 30 seconds? And then I can hit play.
flashcard factory. It opens up. It gives the students uh, a code uh, to log in, and then they get to play with it. And uh, oh, you can shuffle teams. It's it's fantastic. And basically, I'll give you a bottom line. They kind of work together on teams, and it does work remotely as well because they're each given individual prompts on their screen. Um, if it's one of the vocabulary words, and um, I. Not even sure if I noticed what any of those words were. Um, okay, abiotic matter, all right? Uh, the non-living parts of the ecosystem. One student would have to draw a picture of examples for that one. So maybe they would draw the sun or water. And then another student on their team would have to give examples for it. So maybe they would write sun, water, rock, things like that. Um, and then they uh, kind of switch back and forth. And then once kind of the factory making is done, and I stop it, then they're able to kind of match things back and forth. Highly recommend it, looks super fun. Wish I had discovered it weeks ago. I'm really bummed that school, the school year is just about over. All right, so I think I hit everything that I needed to hit. Um, you notice that this entire time there was code up here that is a code that you're not going to use. It was just for me for to present and everything. But if a student gets logged out, and if, or if they join late, they're in presenter view and they go on to Zoom, they can see the code right there. Um, that certainly has saved a couple of kids who come in late uh, instead of the ones who, uh, you know, what, did I miss anything? Yes, of course you missed things. All right, so uh, you can go ahead and you can actually click that link. It will take you to paradeck.com and take this time to start playing around Think about how you can utilize this not only in your Zoom classes, but also in real life. Because uh, I can't wait to be back in the classroom and I think I'm gonna use this every single day. So thank you very much for joining me. Bye.